Okay, let's take all this now and turn it into a single node that we can use for easier placement and creation of pipelines. So if I were to pick all this stuff and look at it, you know, I don't really need all of this stuff, this NURBS construction history, so I'm just going to hide it. This guy I'll move back down to zero. And then let's go into assets, advanced assets. I'm doing advanced because I want to put this all under one uh, all under the same container. I don't want to group them into a hierarchy because then I'll get uh, double transformations. So let's create that. And we can pick a name. Let's call it pipe. Uh, let's call it pipe primitive. Uh, include connected and hierarchy, and we should be good. So that finds everything. All the connected nodes get put in there. If I expand this, we see that's there. And if I turn this to more than DAG objects, you'll see all the uh, other stuff that we create, all that construction history nodes are in there. So let's uh, shrink that down and turn off DAG objects there. So with this guy, now I've set him, I want him to be the uh, selection transform. So we're going to go here, pop that open, parent and child anchor. So if we're going to attach it to anything, you know, parent or group it, this will be the node that controls that. So we'll do that. And then just control right mouse button to open the published asset option box. And I'm going to publish all those attributes. So now when I pick that pipe primitive, uh, that's what we're going to see up there. Now the next thing to do is to go through here and start publishing the other attributes that we're interested in from our construction history. So let's open the node editor and graph this guy. Then we can start looking at what we have. If we zoom in here, I think the first one we want is just make nerves torus, and we can pick uh, most of these guys. We don't need the start sweep or the degree. I think we'll keep the rest of it there. So again, control right mouse button published asset. That control right mouse button menu is the same as this edit menu. So I just like the shortcut. So we'll use the same names that we have on there. Uh, the next one we're looking for is this offset curve and it's that uh, distance. So this, as you'll recall, controls the thickness of the pipe. So you might want to put a custom name on that. Let's say pipe thickness. thing there. So that controls the thickness. What else do we have? The next one here would be our offset node here. So that's going to control the how long the pipe is. Now you see right now I've got this working in a negative direction. So let's let's start fixing that up. One of the nice things with the new node editor here is that you can uh, create new nodes uh, right inside. So I just press tab, I can start typing in a name, and I find my multiply divide. So let's create that, put it over here. So on this guy, I want to make a new attribute that's going to drive the actual length of the pipe. So we'll call that pipe length. We're at a minimum of 0 0.1, default. Oops, maximum can be more than one. Default will be one. So we have that. So we want to use this instead of using this negative value here. So I'm going to take the pipe length, and I can see I just click and click, and I'm going to make that my input on X here. Now what I do is multiply that by two, so whatever that value is, we'll get it twice as long, and then we're going to create a plus minus average node. Oops. I'm having trouble clicking here. So we'll create that plus minus average node. So I'm going to take the original pipe length, put it in here as my first argument, and then the output will be my second. And then on this guy, We'll set this to do a subtract and take that output 1D to drive the distance. So 
if we look here, now we see that that value, these two values haven't changed. So I think we're in good shape here. If I use my control, click to drag, you can see now I'm getting the real values that I would expect, um, and it's driving this one uh, in reverse. So we can take this one, let's bring back our publishing, and because I've called that pipeline, we've got a good name, so we'll just keep that and apply it. And anything else we want to publish here? Maybe your soft edge you might want to do um, merge vert tolerance perhaps. Uh, the one I'm thinking about is this shell tessellate, so maybe you want your U and V values. So let's give a custom name U divisions. And let's put that one as B divisions. Okay. And I think that should just about do it. So we've got a whole mess of stuff on there now. And looks like we've got all the controls we want. So we can close this up, close this up. Let's just switch over to the attribute editor. And one of the things I like with the containers is you can put a, a custom icon on that. So I rendered this icon a little earlier. Let's assign that. Now you see I get that in the outliner. And uh, it's easier for me to tell what's going on. The other thing I can do is turn on black box. And now when I expand this, all I'm going to see is this. So I don't have to worry about any of that other uh, construction history. And when I look in the channel box, you see, this is all, all I see. So I can just focus on this node now. So save that, and uh, we'll, uh, in the next little bit I'll show you how to hook up uh, an asset template so you can customize the display of this in the uh, attribute editor here. So if you want to have some different uh, dis display of these attributes, we can do that.